What's up, YouTube? Um, this past weekend, I managed to make it into top eight at the LA Regionals. Um, I play Going First Nightmare Spiral, and I'll just go ahead and talk about the list as I go along and any kind of changes to the main side and extra after I finish. So, we're playing Spiral, uh, three Super Agent. Uh, nothing to say about this. It's the heart and soul of the deck. Uh, three Tough, even though you are playing Going First Spiral, I think three Tough is necessary because you don't always get to win the die roll and then it counts as super agent while it's on the field so you can resolve your quick fix if you have like a foolish burial or something so three tough and then your spiral one of uh, quick fix drone last resort master plan and sleeper nothing really to say about these they're all crazy good um i drew master plan a whole lot this weekend uh i wish i didn't draw it as much but what are you gonna do and then for hand drops, I played three Effect Veiler. Um, there's no reason that this shouldn't have been Ash Blossom, other than the fact that I don't have Ash Blossom. I didn't want to buy any new cards to play this week. And uh, three Gamma. Now, this card is crazy. Every time I resolve Gamma, except for, I think, one game, I ended up winning the game and the match. Um, it's amazing going second. For any monster effects, you know, your opponent tries to play like an Isolde or something, or really anything, Gamma's crazy. And then going first, it can protect you from cards like Droll and Lockbird that shut you down. Protects you from an Ogre on the field spell, which I did, I think, round two. And I ended up winning that game because I sniped a evenly matched off of the Omega that I summoned off of Gamma as well. And then the last hand trap is DD Crow. And I played this because I played Recital Starling in the extra deck. Um, I don't think I'd play this again, but I'd definitely move it to the side deck, because this card's crazy good against Str Sky Strikers. Nobody really expects it, but whenever they summon the Kogari to add back their engage, you just go ahead and hit him with a DD Crow, and then that sets them way behind, because usually the first engage will be the card that searches their uh, way to summon Kogari, and then they'll be relying on Kogari adding back engage to search their Widow Anchor or whatever other kind of spell they want. And if you can stop that, it really hurts them because they don't get that search. They don't get a multi-roll to reset it for next turn. Um, basically, they usually just have to summon Shizuku, search the engage for next turn, but they'll end up subpar. That's how I won uh, game three against my one striker matchup as I DD crowed the engage, and he was only able to end the one anchor, which is super clutch. And then for the bricks, uh, Italy, this card wasn't... A super bad brick I only I don't think I drew it except for maybe once and I was going second so I discarded it anyway um, but it's not really a brick if you open a, com a decent combo you can summon it bring back a nightmare and it's actually an extender at that point but it can be a brick but thankfully I never saw it whenever it was bad and then the true brick is driver um, you have to play it because you're playing gamma but um, Usually if you were able to put two spiral monsters on the board, it doesn't really matter that you draw this because you're going to be discarding cards for your nightmares anyway. And if, you know, if you don't open two spiral monsters, you can't put two spiral monsters on the board. It doesn't matter what you have in your hand because you're not playing anyway. Uh, moving on to spells. Obviously resort. Yeah, three terraforming. No pseudo space. Um, I felt like ogre was going to fall off in popularity. And I was like semi-right and semi-wrong because I did get ogred a few times. I was able to stop it with Gamma whenever it mattered. But, uh, you know, I didn't really feel a need for pseudo space. Just like another like brick that you needed to make room for. So, it was, this was fine. Uh, the other two spiral spells are Big Red and Assault. I don't think you need more than one Big Red. Um, I'm trying to think of any times it might have mattered. But I don't think there was a single time where having a second Big Red would have been important. And then the Assault um, is actually pretty important if you open Master Plan to be able to get the Master Plan out of your hand by sending an Assault with the Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, three Call by the Grave, because you're playing going for a Spiral, and you need to resolve your Double Helix, and this is how you're going to resolve Double Helix. So if you're able to res like put Double Helix on the field and you have this in hand, you're probably going to win that game. Like Unless your opponent has Spear Mode, then you're probably winning. Uh to Foolish Goods. This probably could have been three because I didn't see this card enough. Um, but I had to cut room because I wanted to play three Rescue in the in the main. So I found 
that I was just going to cut that Foolish Burial Goods because it's a hard one per turn, so it made the most sense to cut out of everything. Uh, but I'd still maybe try and bump it to three if I was playing the deck again. And then, obviously, your broken one ups you got one for one, Foolish, Rhoda, Soul Charge, and Monster Reborn. Yep, you draw these, you win. Nothing to say. And then, finally, deck building requirement, Upstart Goblin. And then the three traps, I played three Spiral Mission Rescue. Now this was amazing because a lot of times people will say that Griffin isn't very good in this deck because it's hard to summon. You have to put a lot of resources into summoning it. But if you're playing three rescue, anytime you be able to end the board with a, a Phoenix, like you normally end like your typical combo, you'll actually be able to end with a Griffin instead if you just play three rescue. And then also it has like value. Um, it's Altergeist. You can banish from the graveyard to revive an agent. Nobody expects that. And it pops a card, then you pop two more of a sleeper, and that's how you win whenever you're playing against that deck. Alright, so I'm moving on to the extra deck. 40 cards, obviously. Um, extra, we have two double helix. I only summoned the second one maybe once or twice the entire tournament, but you still gotta play two. There's definitely no reason to play three, though. Um, Nightmare package. For Nightmares, we have the Mermaid, Phoenix, Cerberus... Goblin, Griffin, and Unicorn. These are all good. I summoned all of these multiple times over the course of the tournament. I, Unicorn, basically every game that I was able to play is because I summoned Unicorn. Um, Griffin, like I said, you play three trap. So you're able to summon Griffin a lot more often if you're playing the three trap card. So it was extra good. Especially like resetting a call by the grave if you're able to hit a hand trap with that early. It's just like an extra level of security. And then also, this is really important against the dinosaur matchup because the dinosaur matchup is surprisingly bad because they can turn off your um, you turn off your sleeper with the conductor. You can't really do anything about it, and then they just attack everything because everything's a little weaker. But with Griffin on the field, they can't conductor, and then you just pop the conductor once they enter the battle phase. Because this happened, I think round three, he miscellaneousaurus protected his conductor during the main phase, but he kind of realized that he couldn't use its effect anyway. I don't think. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but anyway, Griffin got me there against a the dinosaur matchup. And then the only Link 4 besides Griffin I played was Firewall Dragon. Uh, I only made it twice. I never even used one of its effects. Um, I don't really know about playing this card. Like, obviously, if you're crazy, you got, you know, big brain combos, freaking Adderall Turbo. With You can probably turbo out some crazy boards with the Firewall Dragon, but I don't know. Oh, it was more relevant as a Reaper target to me. Um, for Link 3s, try to get Wizard for combos and the OTKs randomly because of the damage effect, and then decode for your standard spiral OTK, um, and then it prevents targeting. It comes up randomly once every blue moon. Uh, Underclock Taker, play this like every deck. Uh, the one Shizuku, no not Shizuku, Kigari. Um, I played this as a Reaper target, and looking back, it's kind of a stupid idea because if they have Ray, they just play around this play around the Reaper, because you Reaper the Kagari, they just chain Ray, summon Kagari anyway, and then they recycle it with their Eclipse spell. Um, I'd still actually keep the Kagari in, though, because I want to make room for Hornet Bit in this deck, because that card's actually just crazy. So, the one Kagari, the XYZ I played was the Recycle Starling. I already talked about this. I'd probably cut the D Crow to the side, and then take this out for a Princess Sprite, because you need to play a rank one. There's a few combos where you have to be able to overlay the Quick Fix, and then the final card was just the one Scythe Frame Omega. I was on this twice. One time I sniped an evenly matched. Feels pretty good, man. And then, so side deck. We got two more DD Crow. Like I said, it's really good against the Sky Strikers. It's really good against the Mirror Match. But not so good against Goki. So I'd probably re regulate these all to the side deck. Um, three Ghost Reaper. This is good against Goki. For the firewall, and it's good against the mirror match. Not very good against uh, Sky Strikers, though. So I made that mistake. I sided this in against Sky Strikers. I didn't see it, but I kind of realized, like, after I sided in, it's like, wow, this is going to suck if he just, like, summons Ray and chains out. So definitely won't side that for that deck anymore. Kaijus might be a little bit better because you can shut down all their stuff by putting a card in the main monster zone. Um, three Twin Twisters. It's for any back row deck. Altergeist, Paleo, it doesn't really matter. Uh, your deck is already, like, super good against that matchup because they're tough and agent you just play through anything and then they can't they can't out of sleeper if it's equipped with the guy 
And then Twin Twister just makes going second against second even more crazy. Same thing with Red Reboot. This card is Cold Wave, essentially. Um, if you resolve this against any trap deck and they don't have the Wiretap or Judgment, you're going to win. And then uh, three Anti-Skill Fragrance, because I'm ignorant and I like the side cards in going first that ensure that no matter what happens, I can't lose. Uh, so Anti-Skill was pretty good. And then Judgment is kind of the same. I'm probably going to take this out of the side deck because of the new time rules, though. I'm not going to be siding a pay half card except for Red Reboot. Okay, so that concludes the main side and extra um, changes. I said I definitely want to make room for Hornet Bit. Um, I'm moving the DD Crow to the side deck. Uh, other than that, I felt like pretty solid about the deck. It's pretty glass cannony, but it, so is Goki. So you just kind of have to live with that if you're going to go this route. If you want to play a consistent deck, I can just play Sky Strikers. But if you open good with this deck, you really can't lose. Um... Notable matchups. Let's see. Uh, uh, my first loss was the eventual 7th place player. He was playing Zephyr. Um, I just couldn't play through the counter traps and the hand traps. And then I opened unplayable my second game. That was pretty brutal. But uh, he got he got in there at 7th and I got in the 8th. And then my second loss was to Asala in round 10. He was playing Goki. He went off. Uh, game 2 he just went off. I couldn't play. And then... Game one, I think I opened unplayable, and then after he played through my hand traps, he went off and killed me. Um, I at that point I thought I was I was X two. I was fairly sure I wasn't gonna make it in the top cut, but then they post the standings, and what do you know? I snuck in at eighth, and it turns out that actually f at least like fifth place through like at least sixteenth were all X two. But I think I got there on my matchups, my tiebreakers, because my losses were to two other top eight players. So pretty fortunate there. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye.